Hi there! So lately I've been feeling a little bit of a creative stumble, if you will. So I've decided I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna re spend my entire day reading comics and then I'm gonna review the comic after the day to see how many comics I can read in one day. I hope you enjoy! The Death of Superman. And the reason I'm starting off with this comic is because there hasn't been a time where I've picked this up and not read the entire thing. If I was to make a list of comics you should read before an execution or colonoscopy, because that's just a butt execution. Excuse me, what? I love the way it begins. It's an absolutely fantastic comic. I love the art, I love the colors. I love the way the story actually begins. It starts off with the conclusion of a previous arc, but it's really good at establishing both characters. It establishes Superman as this good guy superhero who's there for the little guy, and he's there. Yeah! Whilst also Doomsday, on the other hand, comes across as this merciless, unstoppable, destructive force. The next issue focuses on Doomsday taking on the Justice League and absolutely thwarting them while Superman's getting interviewed talking about what it means to be a superhero and kind of complimenting each of them on their own merits. What it means to be a hero, really establishing that these two characters are going to come and collide in conclusion with each other. And then it's you cut to this kid who you met during that issue and you see his perspective as these two Goliaths are clashing with each other. He's just like, oh shit, where's my family? It's just a really humane way of showing these characters clash and collide with each other. One of the really good sequences that isn't talked about a lot in this comic is the sequence between Blue Beetle, Booster Gold and Doomsday. The sequence begins with Blue Beetle getting surprised by Doomsday and pummeled the shit out of and left. And then Booster Gold proceeds to fight Doomsday, but with one hit, Booster Gold is sent flying. And the entire time Booster Gold's flying, he's thinking about Blue Beetle, because if one hit just sent him flying and knocked out his shield, what's going to be left of Blue Beetle? And then you have that nightmare fulfillment of you cutting back to Blue Beetle, finding out he's barely hanging on to life, as Doomsday proceeds to try to fight Booster Gold without his shield really establishing the stakes of that fight in sequence early on. It's a fantastic comic and I would absolutely recommend anyone who gets the chance to read it. Based off the infamous screenplay by Wesley Gibson, Alien 3. Ultimately, I actually really enjoyed this comic. Alien 3 actually suits the Alien franchise and universe a lot better than Alien 3. I'm gonna need a better naming convention for this. Alien 3 is a lot better than Shit Alien and how it fits into the universe. I've actually been a really big fan of the Alien franchise for a really long time now, and this fits the world and the universe so much better, kind of getting into the Frontier War stuff, which is something most people are pretty interested in. Ultimately, I felt this was a much better send off for the crew of Aliens, opposed to killing them off before the title screen by drowning Newt in her cryo tube. It's sort of interesting because even though the crew of aliens are in this movie, you don't really follow them. You're more following the crew of this station and another station who have this sort of Cold War thing going on before they come across this threat and come to the conclusion that we should probably stop being dicks to each other. Ultimately, I really liked it. My only real issue with this movie is that if it came out, it would have been considered a middle movie, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because I genuinely want to know what happens next in this comic but it also kind of sucks because I know I'm never going to find out. All in all, I would say it's a good read. Go for it. Okay, so next up is Batman Nightwatch, which, fun fact, was shit. Now this fun fact was the um, comic I got for free on Batman Day. They say it's free, but it's not really because it's kind of just an ad. Every, every two or so pages, there's an ad for another DC product, and the comic itself is a crossover event thing designed for Fortnite. The issue with these kind of comics that were designed by a ballroom for kids is that they kind of read very much like, Hey Batman, I'm guessing you don't have a Chirper account. Hashtag Sewerman. Smart, not bad for an unofficial fan club. How do you do, fellow children? Another issue with these sort of video game promotional comics is that the art is usually just hideous because they're not basing the characters off a person, they're basing them off a video game character which sort of distorts them. Like, look at his chin! Look at his fucking chin! Hi, slightly future Jacob here. I just did a quick Google of that comic. It's actually not part of the Fortnite event, which doesn't really invalidate any of my criticisms. In fact, I think it makes it worse because if it's not part of the Fortnite event, why the fuck? Ultimately, I would say even though it's free, it's not really worth its price. Next comic. Now, the other one I got for free on Batman Day is Batman The World. And this comic was actually a lot better than the other one. This is kind of what you want to see on a free comic. For starters, 
This was a lot more fun. The art sequences were cooler, the action sequences were cooler, it had interesting plot points, and it kind of makes me want to follow the rest of the series. From my understanding from this, it's going to be a series following several different storylines, taking place in different countries, following their different cultures and art styles, and that's made for a really cool action sequence in the South Korean one. It's a great example of what happens when a comic is actually trying to say or do something. I'm glad I got it, and I'm actually planning to follow through for the rest of the series. So, The Dark Knight Returns. So, how would I describe The Dark Knight Returns? An old man, Bruce, feels his vengeance has been served, but like a moth, he is drawn back to the same flickering trap of his childhood, landing shadows cascaded from light. Realizing the same electricity, the same vaults that drew him as a child reject him now. He is too old to die a good death. So yeah, grumpy old Batman. This is basically an end stage Batman in Superman. This is what happens if they really go into the logic of, oh, I'm a criminal and I'm the boy scout who works for the government. I think as a result of this, we get a lot of really cool parts of the comic and the art style is just phenomenal. The way the panels divide two faces face, the way this Superman is rarely shown, and when he is shown, he's usually shown as black and red cast in shadows, opposed to his traditional blue and red costume. If I was to point and show someone an example of comic book art, it would probably be this comic. Now, a lot of people go, this is the Dark Knight Returns Batman. This is the Dark Knight Returns Batman. But if you actually want to look at what movies I think this story could take place in, I can only really see it taking place in a sequel to the Joker, because this kind of society is the one where this story exists. He was also a lot more flexible than I remember, but he actually takes critique reasonably well, where he's like, oh, I did this. No, this this was stupid. I shouldn't have done this. I'll do this an another way. And Green Arrow comes in and basically calls him an idiot. And then instead of arguing with him, he just listens to Green Arrow's advice. That's what this ending is all about. My only real regret about reading this comic today was that it took a lot longer to read than I remember. And now half the day is gone. Okay, let's see what notes I took while reading Deadpool Kills Deadpool. Fun romp. But ultimately that's all it is. It's not a bad thing, but it is that. It's it's a fun romp. That's what this comic is. It's the final one of the Deadpool Kills series, and you can kind of start to feel it winding down as they go. It was fun, and it was exciting to see Deadpool kill a bunch of different Deadpools in different manners, but when it came to this one, I started to feel the actual drag and inertia of the series. But ultimately, that's all this comic really was. There's not really a lot I can say about this. It's a Deadpool comic. That's all it is, really. It doesn't really go beyond those bounds. If you want to see read a longer version of this, just pick up Deadpool Cops. But in the meantime, it was fun. That's it. Hey, I'm in different clothes. I'm not in focus. Maybe I should set this to autofocus because that would be wise. Because why would you autofocus on that? I know I'm in different clothes, which means it's the next day, but I actually did read this comic. I didn't film it because I was starting to get a really bad headache because it was the day I got my second vaccine. This one is the one I decided to finish on because I really wanted to get a flash one in there. This is volume seven of The Perfect Storm. This one I personally really like because it's amazing. Really, it's the climax of a lot of Williamson's stories that he set up. A lot of these stories that have been set up throughout Rebirth have really come to their head now and they're coming to a conclusion that is honestly quite satisfactory. Something I really like about this climax is that at its heart, even though it is this massive climax of all these stories, at its heart it's still a Flash story. He just is a guy that wants to help people, including his villains. Also, the art in this is so fucking cool! Specifically the art by Carmen D. Gan Domingo, and the coloring by Ivan Placin... Placinia? There's no way in hell I pronounced them correctly. Those two people? It's amazing. Essentially what I'm saying is I really like this comic because it's got fantastic art, it's got a fantastic story, but also it's got a really good heart to it, which is The Flash's heart, which is something I really enjoy. Now, if you like this content, thank you very much. I'm actually looking forward to doing a lot more freeform stuff. I think I'm going to go back and try to do some more vlogs every now and then. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you should like this, you should share, like, and subscribe, and comment down below. What is your favorite comic? What comics do you like to read? But in the meantime, Thanks for watching.